The Saw movies are very hit and miss for me. I liked the first one, I hated the second one, 3 was okay, 4 was bad, 5 was okay, 6 was awesome, and 7 was just... okay. Then we get to the others. Jigsaw I can barely remember, but I thought it was average. And the last one, Spiral from the Book of Shit. I thought it was just awful. And this is the first Saw movie where I predicted who the killer was very early on, as well as his methods. And there was no doubt in my mind who the killer was. And by the end of the film, I was right. So I was going to watch Saw 10 out of obligation. At the end of the day, it's the traps that we come here for, as well as seeing some of Tobin Bell as John Kramer, aka Jigsaw, and hear him say, Hello, Gary. I want to play a game. In fact, Saw 10 was such an obligation movie to me that I saw the first trailer and then I completely forgot that this movie even existed. And this actually caused me to forget everything I saw in the trailer. So I went into this movie completely blind. And I gotta say, I thought the movie was so much more enjoyable for that very reason. Just like Saw 6, this movie has very involved story and characters. So right off the bat, I'm just gonna say, this is in my top 3 list of favourite Saw films. If you're like me and you only liked Saw 1 and 6, then you will really like this one too. So that is my spoiler free recommendation. From here, I'm going to get into what I liked about this film, but that involves showing clips from the trailer, and the trailer spoils the stuff that I didn't know. So if I were you, don't watch the trailer and go in completely blind, and that will make you enjoy the film a whole lot more. Now the story of a Saw 10 is essentially a revenge story. The film takes place between Saw 1 and 2 and for the first time you are actually following John Kramer as the main character of the movie. And this one element was such a huge thing that made this Saw film stand out from the rest. Because you don't spend time with some random victims the whole film, you actually get to follow the slasher villain himself. And that is something I have not seen in any of these slasher films. Usually the slasher is the antagonist, but here he is the protagonist. And I really mean it too, because the characters that he is putting in these traps are a bunch of con artists that deceive him into thinking that he has been cured of his brain cancer. And these con artists do this to many other people that have similar fatal conditions as well. And much like Saw 6, that makes the Jigsaw victims in this movie the bad guys. So when you watch them get scared by all of these traps, it's sick and it's inhumane, but you kind of feel that they actually deserve the stress that they're in. Now as soon as the traps start going, that's when the movie does a great job at making you think, okay, they deserve something to happen to them, but not this. And I love how this movie is able to just emotionally manipulate you like that. And it even throws some other curveballs at you and makes you think, you have the main con man that profited from this, who is in fact a con woman, but the others, some of them are just really poor and wanted to make some money. And you actually feel bad for them and think, maybe they don't deserve to be a part of this. But then Jigsaw, being the crazy slasher villain that he is, says that they still knew what they were doing, so they're also going to be tested just as harshly. And that makes you hate Jigsaw, but then you see that Jigsaw also has a code, such as when one of his victims win, he tries to look after them and send them to the hospital. This one detail makes Jigsaw a psychopath, but a psychopath that in his own messed up way actually cares. He's like, you win, and now I'm going to hold up my end of the bargain, and I'm going to look after you. And again, I really do love how this movie emotionally manipulates you in that way, and constantly messes with your opinion of Jigsaw and these people. I think it is very intentional and it works. Now it doesn't work all the time, the very last shot of the movie felt too manipulative to me and I was like, yeah you're trying to make me root for these characters walking off into the sunlight but I don't think they're that rootable. So I didn't quite like that and the movie also keeps one of the victims alive at the end and I wish they would have just killed that person off too. And the movie also has some lapses in logic but at this point that's part of the territory when you watch a Saw movie. It's just so long as the movie doesn't have too much of a lapse in logic, which is what some of them fell victim to, but this one doesn't fall victim to it too much. So yeah, I really like this movie guys. The first half of the film was so different from any other Saw film that I was actually surprised they allowed it to go that far. It actually felt like the movie became a straightforward drama for a while, and I didn't want it to stop. But this was the movie very smartly setting up its victims, including John Kramer, and it made the traps all the more investing, and they were really gruesome. I was squirming in my seat quite a few times, and I could hear my audience doing the same thing. And Tobin Bell as John Kramer, he really does carry this movie, and setting the movie from his perspective was the best thing they could have done, and I'm surprised it took 10 movies for them to figure it out. And Tobin Bell delivers a fantastic performance, especially in that first half of the movie, because like I said, it is a full-on drama, and he really sells it. So overall, I surprisingly really liked this film, and I would give it a very good 7 out of 10. 
I actually want to see the film again, and I'm curious to see if I would give it an 8. And be sure to stay for that mid credit scene. That was so funny, and it made the movie even better. Even the audience that I was with loved it. But yeah, Saw 10 definitely kicked this month of October off to a good start, as opposed to the new Exorcist movie which seems to have just flicked its audience off as people don't seem to like this film. So if you are torn between the two, go watch Saw 10. It's a really good Saw movie and definitely one of the best.